Hi, everyone. Welcome to Tips and Tea with Linnea FNP. My name is Linnea Baker. I am a board certified family nurse practitioner, as well as a certified health and well being coach. And today, I am so grateful for each of you for giving me some of your valuable time. And I'm going to talk about really how stress sabotages our health and what we can do about it. It's a very important topic, um, and I'm excited to get to cover it in some detail tonight for all of you. So first off, got my tea. <laughs> first off, stress really is a part of life. We know this in today's fast-paced world. Uh, stress is all around us. We all experience it in various forms. There can be daily stress that we get from watching the news. We can get daily stress from caring for others, from past traumas. Food can also be stressful, such as inflammatory foods and ultra-processed foods, like the foods we've talked about on this, um, in this forum in the past. Work can be stressful. Relationships can be stressful. You can have psychological stress. You can have emotional stress. You can have personal challenges, or you can get stress from societal expectations as well. And the key is understanding how stress affects our health and what we can do to better manage how we respond to the stress. So it's about how we respond. We can't eliminate stress altogether in, in most cases, but it's how we manage it and how our bodies, how we allow ourselves to respond to it. So stress, when it's chronic um, or overwhelming stress, can lead to a range of health issues, okay? So we're talking about stress that occurs for a long time. And it can affect our health anywhere from causing uh, mental health concerns like anxiety or depression to even physical problems such as weight gain, heart disease, and a weakened immune system. Actually, guys, this is really interesting. 75 to 90% of all doctors or healthcare provider office visits are for stress-related ailments, complaints, and concerns. 75 to 90% in the United States. That's powerful. That's how big a problem stress is. That's why I'm talking about it tonight. I'm going to give you some more education on it. And that is why um, managing stress and minding our mind is one of our healthy habits we talk about when we talk about holistic health and wellness. So first, we want to take a moment to discuss and understand the science behind stress. When we encounter a stressful situation, our bodies go into that fight or flight uh, response that kicks in. We've heard about that. And that's because our body starts releasing hormones like cortisol and adrenaline, okay? So fight or flight, we're talking about releasing the hormones cortisol and adrenaline. So the fight or flight response is actually part of the sympathetic nervous system. And this response was essential for our survival, in, right? In ancient times, up until modern times, we really needed this fight or flight response for survival. However, chronic activation of this fight or flight response, that chronic stress activating that system can really impact negatively our health or take a toll on our health. So we wanna talk about adrenal fatigue, okay? I know everyone's heard about cortisol, but I'm gonna cover this a little bit differently because it's really important that we understand this. So for the basics of adrenal glands, your adrenal glands are actually located on top of each of your kidneys. You have a gland, okay, an, an adrenal gland. And they play a crucial role in producing the hormones like cortisol and adrenaline. And those hormones are actually essential for managing stress, regulating um, our metabolism, and supporting overall health. Okay. When we have adrenal fatigue, that occurs when the adrenal glands aren't functioning optimally, and that can lead to imbalances in our hormone production. And this can manifest in different ways. It may impact our energy levels, our metabolism, our sleep, our emotions, and even our ability to cope with stress can happen from adrenal fatigue. Okay. Remember the adrenal glands, they produce the hormones, cortisol and adrenaline, and they both, they, Adrenal glands sit on top of each of the kidneys. So there is a um, podcast I love listening to, um, and I, I've mentioned this in the immunity talk. It's Dr. Mark Hyman's The Doctor's Pharmacy, and pharmacy is spelled F-A-R-M. 
And this is a podcast called how this is, was the title of the podcast, how chronic stress impacts your health and drives adrenal dysfunction. This was on September 4th of 23. And, um, Dr. Elizabeth Boehm talks about adrenal fatigue on this podcast. And she says adrenal adaptation is the way the adrenal glands and the brain communicate when we have been subject to chronic stress for long periods of time. So we go into, we're under chronic stress for a long period of time. These adrenal glands have been under stress from the way we've been reacting and whatever stress has been taking a toll on us. And we have adrenal adaptation occur. So what happens is initially we have a high cortisol response, that fight or flight response. We do need cortisol to live, okay? Cortisol actually helps manage immunity, inflammation in our body. It gives us energy in the morning as well. And the goal is that we want to secrete cortisol throughout the day. So she says that chronic fatigue syndrome Hashimoto disease patients and those with autoimmune disease that she's encountered tend to have flatline adrenal curves showing that they're not getting enough cortisol on board. So at first it goes really high and then it kind of flatlines as the adrenals adapt. And that's because we're adapting, our, our body is designed to adapt and we're adapting to this chronic stress. Because in ancient times, this fight or flight response was there so that when we were being chased by predators like a tiger, we'd be able to survive because, because we'd be able to respond quickly. But today, those constant stress signals from the environment actually cause our bodies to shift into survival mode because our bodies have not, um, our body doesn't recognize that we're in modern times and we're not living in a cave being chased by predators or that we have readily available food all the time. Um, our bodies are, are living in the scarcity mindset of food from ancient times. Our bodies don't know the difference in modern society versus ancient times. We have these um, innate survival skills from from thousands of years ago, okay? And so this constant stress it signals our bodies from the environment, right? All this stress is coming at us from our environment and it causes our bodies to shift into that survival mode. And that's when our bodies actually start to conserve resources and energy. However, eventually we don't produce a lot of cortisol. And Dr. Um, Wetz actually says, or Dr. Um, Boehm, I'm sorry, Dr. Boehm actually says that it's kind of like the boy who cried wolf syndrome and we keep our cortisol low. So it's av available later when the bear actually um, is chasing us and comes. So we've had all this stress, constant overloading our adrenal glands and we put out all this cortisol, but it keeps happening. And then our bodies are like, you know, there's no way we're still running from this predator. So we're just not going to release as much cortisol now because it, we're going to wait until there's actually uh, it's needed from a bear attack or someone or a bear or a predator chasing us. Right. But what happens when you have adrenal dysfunction and adrenal fatigue is your cortisol will rise again, but it actually occurs in the evening. So I used to experience this. This is pretty powerful, guys. It's called being wired and tired. I'm not sure if any of you can relate. I've heard many patients say this, um, but you feel wired and tired in the evening, even though you felt exhausted all day long. And then that leads to trouble sleeping. We awaken in the morning tired. And it's because our body's not in alignment with our circadian rhythm. Guys, I had this and um, I experienced, I would be absolutely exhausted all day long. And then come nighttime, it was like, I, I was exhausted, but I couldn't fall asleep. Okay. And so many of the people I talk with and work with also complain of this. So this is why this is happening. It's called adrenal dysfunction or fatigue. So now that we have a little bit of an idea of how the adrenal function works, let's kind of talk about some of the signs that may indicate adrenal fatigue. You can have brain fog, fatigue. That three o'clock crash, I used to get that all the time in clinic. When I worked, I would be tired all day and then I would definitely crash in the afternoon. Brain fog, irritability, anxiousness, mood swings, feeling hungry or even really hangry, uh, having light sensitivity, having salt cravings, being dependent on caffeine to wake up and having a glass of wine or a drink to wind down. I did that. I did that to help... A, 
kind of try to wake up and go to sleep because my circadian rhythm and was out of whack. My adrenal glands, everything was not in alignment anymore. Some people may even get dizzy when they stand up from low blood pressure. So you feel wired and tired at night, difficulty winding down to sleep despite being exhausted all day long. We talked about that. Difficulty sleeping and awakening tired despite feeling like you had adequate sleep and unexplained weight gain. This is the biggest one people notice, especially when I'm coaching them, they get very frustrated. So I noticed after I gave birth to my daughter, um, that's when over time I started experiencing now what I know was adrenal fatigue. I didn't know that then or for a long time. And it was on, it occurred to my body, this adrenal fatigue or dysfunction, because I was, I constantly didn't have enough sleep guys. When you have a newborn, you're up constantly feeding them and taking care of them. And also the stress of taking care of a, a newborn being a new mom, right? Uh, that sleep deprivation can lead to adrenal fatigue or dysfunction. My husband was deployed in Afghanistan. I had a special needs older child at home to take care of. We lived in Hawaii away from our family. So these symptoms, as I got older, they just got worse and worse. But it started after really, if I look back after I had my daughter, our bodies change, right? And then depending on the stress and the things that you're under. So I want to talk a little bit about the weight gain and stress connection, because this one is so important. Uh, so many people... Um, don't understand how this works. And I get that. And they don't understand when um, I ask them, are they stressed? They feel that they're managing it, or they were successful in the past with weight loss when they were stressed. Well, let me just kind of go through how the mechanism works. Dr. Mark Hyman is a functional medicine doctor, and he has a podcast. I told you the doctor's pharmacy, F-A-R-M, um, and he's been practicing um, medicine for decades and really in this vein of um, holistic health and wellness. And obviously functional medicine looks for the root cause and treats the whole body as it's connected, not separate. So he states, Dr. Hyman, that weight gain occurs because your brain chemistry and neurotransmitters are actually talking to your fat cells. They tell your fat cells when you are under stress to store more fat. So literally, stress makes you gain weight independent of what you are eating. That's the mechanism, guys, because your body, remember, is geared towards ancient time survival. It has no idea we're living in modern society. So when you're under constant stress, your body is preparing for a famine and is going to store extra fat. It's going to talk to the fat cells and store extra fat for your survival. So additionally, um, Dr. Wentz discusses that the weight gain phenomena, um, and she talks about this on the Model Health Show. That's another podcast I love with Sean Stevenson. And this was the um, November 12th, 23 podcast titled Boost Fat Loss and Upgrade Your Health with Science-Backed Tools for Beating Stress, okay? And Dr. Wentz states that even when people are in a caloric deficit, they will have difficulty losing weight under chronic stress because of how our bodies adapt to the stress signal. Even when you're in a caloric deficit, chronic stress causes difficulty losing weight because of how our bodies are adapting to that stress signal. And the body is a complex system. We said that it includes the gut microbiome, hormones, these ancient survival mechanisms are all interacting. And that's why when we talk about focusing on calories in, calories out, eat less, move more, that philosophy has failed time and again. It may give short-term success, but it is not sustainable because our body adapts and our body is more complex than just calories in, calories out, and how much exercise or movement we did in a day. Way more complex, as you can see just in this talk. So our bodies adapt. Over-exercising and restricting calories send a message to the body that this is stress, okay? So over-exercising and restricting your calories sends messages telling your body that you're under stress and the body then holds on to the calories to keep the body from starving because the body interprets this action as food's not available. And also when you're over-exercising, your body thinks you're running from a predator. This is when you're in an unhealthy state and your circadian rhythm is off, your adrenal, uh, you're in adrenal fatigue or adrenal dysfunction. 
So our stress response has adapted to say, hey, we're running from a tiger or we're trying to survive a famine. And our stress response, I told you, it's not um, adapted to modern society. It is still being triggered as if we live in ancient times. Okay. And therefore our body goes into energy comfort conservation. And this is the adaptive physiology. Our body thinks we're in a famine when we do caloric restriction. So it hangs on to energy and stores it. Our body's talking to our fat cells saying, store it. If we're over exercising, that puts extra stress and inflammation on the body. We've talked about chronic inflammation can come from over exercise. And that again, makes your body think that you're under this stress attack. You're running from a, a predator. And so your body conserves energy to survive. And it goes into that fight or flight mode. So one of the hormone interactions with chronic stress to affect weight comes from your body signaling the thyroid gland, actually, okay? And the thyroid gland, it actually influences metabolic rate, and it's how your body processes and uses energy. The stress signal will tell your body to conserve energy, so the thyroid gland will slow down your metabolism. So we're storing fat in, cell, in the fat cells and store, conserving energy and slowing down the metabolism. So then people say to me all the time, what's wrong with me? And they're very frustrated and they feel like they're failing, but it's not their fault. Okay. What's actually happening is that the stress of whatever chronic stress is going on in their life, sometimes it's focusing on dieting, something overly restrictive. Sometimes it's meal prepping, weighing foods, counting calories, food logging, um, that can create stress. So you really, when you go on a, a lifestyle change and you look at nutrition, you want something sustainable and something that you're not really um, stressing yourself out about because that can add to stress and work against you. And it can create that vicious cycle um, that cr creates these other stressors, okay? Your body also is trying to conserve energy. So it's slowing down the metabolism and storing fat and that becomes a vicious cycle. In Western medicine, we only diagnose extreme adrenal dysfunction. So it may be like Addison's or Cushing's disease. Addison's disease is when we don't make enough cortisol. So then they give you cortisol for, as a prescription. But um, according to Dr. Isabel Wen, she said that doesn't actually correct the stress that leads to um, doesn't actually correct the underlying stress and can lead to suppressing the, the feedback loop hormone. So it's not a long-term solution. Now, remember, this is general education. So obviously there's so many reasons why, you know, if you have Addison's disease, you work with your specialist, usually it's an endocrinologist and you have these discussions with them about what the long-term plan is um, and, and what's the reason you have Addison's disease. And, um, you know, don't you, you'd follow the instructions by your specialist or provider that's managing your medications and your specific um, diagnosis because they know you best and we don't want you to do any harm to yourself. So just what I want you to do is just go in and have these conversations if you're interested in knowing more by the people managing, the, the providers managing this. And usually you'll be with an endocrinologist at this point. And then Cushing's disease is when you have too much. Um, but that's, they don't usually measure or treat what's in between those extreme too much or too little Addison's and Cushing's in Western medicine. And this is where functional medicine and some of the information I was getting on adrenal fatigue and adrenal dysfunction, it's that in between step, just like insulin resistance. Um, we talked about before, you know, most of the time they're talking about prediabetes, maybe, but especially type two diabetes as far as lifestyle goes. And um, insulin resistance starts a lot longer before all of those diagnoses, okay? So Dr. Wen says the solution is to rebalance the stress response. So we wanna tell our body um, it's safe in a language that the body understands. And she calls this safety signals. I was like, that's impressive. She also said catching the adrenal fatigue before it becomes extreme diagnosed in Western medicine is key. And um, giving your body safety signals consistently for two to three weeks can, can work very well for a lot of people. Now, obviously, again, this is just information and education. So you need to have those conversations with your personal healthcare providers who know you best uh, because there's so many different reasons to have these diagnoses and you should never suddenly stop a medication. You talk with your healthcare provider or specialist um, to make sure what's good for you to be safe, okay? Um, so 
We want to look at our body as a finely tuned instrument and chronic stress disrupts, it disrupts that harmony. Okay. It affects everything from our heart to our digestion, to our sleep, to our mood. And when we discuss a holistic approach to health and wellness, stress plays a huge role in how our bodies function. And this is wired, like I said, from ancient times so that we could survive. Our bodies do not know we live in modern times and we don't have to worry now about food scarcity or being chased by a predator like a bear or a tiger. Unless you lived in upstate New York like me, my brother and I got chased out of the woods by a bear a couple of times. That's just a sidebar. <laughs> so the first step in managing stress is identifying its sources. What are the stressors in your life? So think about it for a minute. What, what are the things that give you stress every day? Is it work-related pressure, relationship trouble? Maybe it's financial concerns. That's a big one, especially right now, given the um, inflation and how high the cost of food and gas and just basic needs for living are now. Stress plays a significant role in adrenal health, as we've discussed. And when we're under prolonged excessive stress, the adrenal glands can become overworked and lead to adrenal dysfunction or fatigue. And this can result in an imbalance of cortisol and that can impact various bodily functions. So lifestyle factors play a crucial role in adrenal health, okay? Poor nutrition, lack of sleep, and chronic stress can contribute to adrenal fatigue or dysfunction. And the good news is that there are steps we can take to support our adrenal glands. So I really wish I had known this before, because as I've been on my health journey, all these things have gotten regulated just in what I've done, because I, I didn't have a diagnosis. I never had a diagnosis of Cushing's or Addison's, but I can tell you all these symptoms and signs we talked about, I had that. I had it, my circadian rhythm was off. Um, I was under constant stress. I was gaining weight no matter what I did. Now we talk about all the different things we can do and it all comes down to lifestyle. And that's what my passion is because I have gone on this incredible health journey and I've been doing it well over three years now consistently. And and it's those small daily habits for a healthy lifestyle that compound over time. So healthy coping mechanisms, it's really crucial to have a toolkit of strategies to navigate stress effectively. And Dr. Isabel Wentz, speaks, um, she spoke about the safety signals on that Model Health Show podcast I told you with Dr. Sean Stevenson. And she said, we need to give our body safety signals to let our bodies know where we are okay and safe. And it allows our body to get into the parasympathetic system, which is the rest and digest system. So I told you the sympathetic system is fight or flight, right? That's when we're revved up, ready to, to um, fight or flight from a predator. Well, our parasympathetic system is considered the rest and digest system. And we need to give our body the signals to let it know that we are able to rest and digest, okay? And there are signals we can give it so that we can manage these external stressors coming at us. And this a parasympathetic system, this rest and digest system, it actually helps us rebuild and heal our bodies. And these safety signals tell our bodies that we don't need to revert to our ancient survival mechanisms, okay? So safety signals, according to Dr. Wentz, she says, when we talk about a circadian rhythm, so those people that have coffee to wake up in the morning because they're dragging and then wine to wind down, that that would be one of the signs you're like wired and tired at night. Your cortisol levels are, are not in the right ratio. They should be high in the morning and lower at night. And I had them reversed just by my symptoms and how my body was responding. I can tell you right now, this is what I had because that was me. I would go all day exhausted, drinking all kinds of caffeine. And then at home, I was wired and tired and trying to wind down for bed at night and had trouble sleeping. So what is a circadian rhythm? It's a 24 hour cycle that's part of our body's internal clock and it runs in the background to carry out essential functions and processes. And we can reset it by stepping outside. So this circadian rhythm, you can reset it by stepping outside and getting enough sunshine in your eyes during the daytime. And that turns off your melatonin production. And then too much light in the evenings with screens, right? That interferes with melatonin and sleep. So early day sunshine, 
getting outside for early morning or early day sunshine when the sun's up is actually a safety signal to our body. It would be like getting out of your cave. You're not hiding in your cave in ancient times. So Dr. Huberman is a neuroscientist and he was on the Model Health Show with Dr. Sean Stevenson as well on the same podcast as Dr. Wentz, the 11 12 23 boost fat loss and upgrade your health with science backed tools for beating stress. And he says that this one practice, when we talk about early day sunshine as a safety signal, he says this one practice can fundamentally change your ability to cope with stress and sleep better. So he says you should view morning sunlight within 30 to 60 minutes of waking up. You want to get outside because wind windows will actually filter light. And he said, if, if you can do so safely, go outside without sunglasses on. Um, and he said, ideally, you want to be outside for five to 10 minutes on a clear day, 20 to 30 minutes on a cloudy day. And if it's really overcast, get outside from 10 to 60 minutes early in the day. And he said, the key is you don't have to look directly at the sun. Don't look directly at the sun. The, the light energy is all around. You just need to be outside. And you can wear sunglasses if you need to, but if, if you don't need to, then he said, take the sunglasses off and just be outside. And that captures, um, uh, it's, he said that this light energy from the sun that's all around us, not looking at the sun directly, just being outside. He said, it's the light energy is actually captured by the nerve cells in the back of the eye. And that goes to a master clock in our brain, which sends chemical electrical signals to our body. He says if you're if you wear eyeglasses or or um, if you wear eyeglasses or contacts, that's fine, um, not an issue. And he said this practice times the cortisol to the correct part of the day, so it can help with depression and the serotonin melatonin pathway because we're getting our circadian rhythm corrected. How many of you actually wake up? I mean, I used to wake up. And in, in sometimes it'd be dark in the morning. I'd go to work when it was dark. I'd work all day. I'd come home when it was dark. I'd be under fluorescent lighting all day. And when I was doing that, because of my work hours, I wasn't getting fresh air and sunlight at all. I was in, I went from the house to the garage, to the car, park the car, run into the office, come back to the car, come home and be inside. And when you do that, your body's um, natural circadian rhythm gets thrown off. Okay. That's what happened to me. I experienced all of this. That's why this was blowing me away. I'm like, man, this isn't interesting. Um, and he says, just by doing this one behavior with early um, uh, getting out in the daytime and getting that um, early morning sunshine can lead to a very large positive impact on mood and ability to sleep. He also says that it, it sets the foundation for your ability to cope with stress. So try to avoid home lights and screens uh, and screen lights from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. is what he recommends. He said even a little bit of light can cause reductions in the chemicals and dopamine, which is your well-being hormone and deficits in learning can happen and it can create more stress going over the days to come. OK, so um, just having that. um Early day sunshine is your safety signal and can reset the cortisol so that your cortisol is going up in the morning when it's supposed to be helping you wake up and then going down at night when your melatonin should be going up and helping you sleep. So um, I thought that was really interesting. But I will tell you that now part of my daily routine, I do get up in the morning and I walk outside almost every day. Um, very few days I'm not outside depending on the weather, but I really try to get outside. Now I was wearing sunglasses. Um, for the most part. So um, now starting when I was doing this research, um, as long as it's not too bright outside, I'll go outside without my sunglasses on for about 10, 15 minutes, and then I'll put them on for the rest of the time I'm walking. Um, but I thought that was really interesting. Also, Dr. Wentz mentions for safety signals, balanced nutrition, focus on nourishing your body with an anti-inflammatory nutrient dense uh, focus on nourishing your body with anti-inflammatory nutrient dense foods. And um, that's the nutrition plan I talk about and I follow, and that's what changed my health. Um, and that's what I work on when I coach people. She also said, you want to focus on macro and micronutrients in your diet um, and in your nutrition. And that lets your body know that you can ramp up your metabolism because you have everything you need, especially the micronutrients, right? That's so important. And that's part of what I do. And then you, I use supplements to help fill in the nutritional gaps and support optimal body function. But I've told you this before, not all supplements are created equal. 
And you really need to be aware of where you're getting your supplements from and how the companies test and how they source them and what their testing process is, because that makes a difference. I can tell you the products I use, they have a strict um, testing protocol. And I know that when I purchase that supplement, it has everything in it at the levels it says it has because of the rigorous testing it does um, in their company and through their own company policies. But not every company is like that, so you need to be aware of that. Okay, adequate sleep. Prioritizing quality sleep to allow your body to rest and recover is so important to give yourself safety signals. And adults, remember, need a minimum of seven hours of quality sleep a night. And however, according to Dr. Wentz, there actually is research stating that when your body's been in adrenal fatigue, it would benefit from 10 to 12 hours of sleep nightly for 30 days. Now, that's not always realistic, but I will tell you when I left the clinic and I, I told you I was taking care of my son and that's when I left the clinic, he was um, fighting cancer. He had a stage three soft tissue cancer. Uh, some of you may realize, know that from things I've talked about before, some may not. But once I, we were done with his treatment and I went home and was working from my home-based health and wellness business, I will tell you that there were times I thought something was wrong with me because I could easily sleep 10 to 12 hours. I never used to be able to sleep that good. Never. My whole life, I've never really slept that long. And um, I will tell you that when I slept after being home and not being up to an alarm clock and running that grind and and not getting daylight and all the things. I was getting daylight um, because I was just implementing a, a program of exercise of just walking in the neighborhood in the morning to start my day. And I will tell you, as my um, circadian uh, clock started to uh, normalize and I started to heal, I was already doing my nutrition journey and working on some other things. Um, I slept for easy 10 to 12 hours a day. And I really started to wonder if I needed to go get my labs checked because I was starting to get worried. And eventually it got to the point where it, it worked itself out and I didn't need that much sleep anymore. But when I read this, it made sense. That's the state my body was in and that's what it needed to recover and reset. Not everyone can do that. I understand that, but that's just something that Dr. Wentz was talking about. And then stress management, we want to incorporate stress-reducing activities like meditation, yoga, or deep breathing exercises to help be, um, manage the stress. We really want to practice techniques that help you stay present and centered. And this is so important that stress um, and how to manage stress is actually a topic I cover for a whole week in a four-week um, coaching program I do in a private Facebook group for anyone going on a health journey with any kind of nutrition with me. And this is something I cover for a whole week because it's that impactful in your overall health. And remember guys, 75% to 90% of all medical appointments are for stress-related conditions or ailments. So that's why this is so important. And I talk about it all the time. And I think people get sick of hearing me say it because they think it's just calories in, calories out, or just this or just that. It's all connected. Yes, we need to eat an anti-inflammatory uh, diet and we need to eat colorful fruits and veggies and we need to um, support our gut health and we need to exercise and sleep and drink water. And that's all important. But it is also important to have a... Um, in, uh, a what am I trying to say? Intentional, intentional plan to manage stress. So I now do, I walk outdoors in the morning, I'm getting good sleep, but I also meditate with a guided meditation for five to 10 minutes. I listen to podcasts that are positive and uplifting or educational. I don't turn on the news every day. I only check the news few and far between because it's overwhelming for my body to handle listening to that um, negative reel all the time. Um, I, I choose not to listen to it every day, all day long. I, 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 ch I uh, tune into it just at certain times um, and certain days and very rarely. And I also read books that are um, growing me and minding my mind. And I'm, and I don't watch really hardly any TV. I'm very careful on the shows I watch, if any. Okay. Now hydration, it is important to stay well hydrated to support your overall bodily functions to reduce stress, right? We know that. And regular exercise uh, is important. Engage in moderate exercise to boost mood and reduce stress. But remember, we want to avoid over-exercising because that can create inflammation and stress as well. So you can start with yoga or walking or resistance training or a combination of that to avoid triggering that stress response. 
And physical activity is really a fantastic stress buster. I know it helps me so much just relax if I'm feeling stressed and it releases endorphins that help improve your mood. So building resilience is key. And it's about bouncing back from life's challenges. And that starts with taking care of your physical and mental health. And so being um, more resilient is huge, right? And physical activity can help reduce stress. We talked about how walking can improve immunity. Um, it's anti-inflammatory. And then once your body has healed um, or, or is more regulated and healthier, then you can start adding back in more intense workouts um, according to what you and, and if you're under the care of a physician decide is okay for you. Um, but you just have to uh, be careful when you're using it and how much you're doing so that you don't create more problems than, than you want. So I wanted to talk about a client of mine because this was a client I coached earlier on and um, this is how drastic her health change was because of several things we did. She, um, I, I've had so many clients give me, um, see just such huge success and have inspiring stories through uh, working with me and being coachable through um, just different things that they needed. And it's transformed their lives. And part of it was prioritizing stress management for their overall well-being. Um, and my health journey is one of them that I had did a lot of things to reduce the chronic stress in my life and to live a healthier lifestyle. And that's why I was so unhealthy when I hit my forties and I was grinding it out in the clinic and I wasn't taking care of me. So by pivoting and implementing these healthier lifestyle habits, it made a huge impact, but stress management was one of them. So one of the clients I coached came to me, it'll be a little over three years ago now. And when she came to me, um, she uh, was morbidly obese. She had um, 11 autoimmune diseases. She was on 68 pills a day and she was in pain every day. She had migraines every day. Um, and she was a single mom and had... Um, had to take care of her boys who were young and she was not feeling well and she had discipline. This woman had such discipline. She was like probably eating 800 to a thousand calories a day and she was exercising like crazy and um, she was stuck. I think she said she had done like a keto type diet and lost 60 pounds and plateaued and couldn't do any more, even though she was so restrictive on her calories and, um, exercising a lot. And this is why I tell you guys, I've, I've done a, um, I did a um, presentation a while back called debunking calories in calories out. And I cited Dr. Jason Fung, who's a doctor who talks about intermittent fasting and all the things. But um, I, I told her early on, I did a, a 24 hour um, food intake with her. I had her log it for me for a couple of days so I could see what she was doing. And that's when I realized how severe her calorie deficit was. And then I saw how much and what she was doing for exercise. And I literally told her she needs to eat more and exercise less. And she looked at me like I had three heads and I get that because it's against what everyone tells you. But what she was doing wasn't working. And it's because her body was under so much stress that it was storing and conserving energy and storing fat and fat cells and trying to conserve energy and slow down her metabolism because it was prepared for famine and running from predators. Because again, our bodies adapt from ancient times, our bodies do not realize we are in modern times and we're not running from predators and that we're not in a famine and we have access to food. So she went on a health journey with me to support her gut health and get really good, robust nutrition in her diet. And I told her we're not counting calories. I gave her the plan and I significantly reduced her exercise. And on day three, she said, Linnea, what is this sorcery? And I said, I know, I know it's gut health. And this whole system of nourishing her body with whole foods and not worrying about calories and getting her body out of this stress state, but also food can cause stress. So by giving her tons of this great whole food nutrition and showing her how to eat more and what to eat and getting her body out of this chronic stress state, guys, she started to go and lose weight and get healthier. And after a year of continuing this small compound, daily habits compounded over time, and she worked with her specialist. She has a rheumatologist for her um, autoimmune diseases. We don't treat, cure, or diagnose here, but I'm telling you, 
I did a lifestyle approach and she went with her specialist over the year and was able over that year with her doctor to titrate her medications down from 68 pills to four pills a day. And she was able to lose 188 pounds in a year. She's thriving. She's able, she hasn't had a migraine since she, I believe since she started this journey with me, I know they used to be daily and she still sees her rheumatologist. She still has 11 autoimmune diseases, but through adding lifestyle and getting the stress managed in how she was responding to her environment and reducing the food stress that was impacting her body and being able to um, change a few things about how she was trying to achieve her goals it compounded and she achieved way more than she thought she could. And it was never discipline or, or willpower with her. It was the way her body was responding to stress because that girl has more willpower and determination and discipline than, than pretty much anybody I know. It's incredible. But when she had the tools in her hands, she worked alongside her specialist and was able to have huge accomplishments on her health journey. And he was impressed as well because he knows how important lifestyle is. And he worked alongside with her lifestyle approach with, with everything she was doing to help her get to where she is. Um, and he was so happy to see her thriving. And so um, just a really neat story on just one example of how you can thrive when you do these daily healthy habits and you manage the stress in your environment coming at you by how you react. I've had so many people say, Linnea, the stress isn't going away. I get that. I'm not unrealistic. I've, I've lived a crazy um, life to a point. I've had childhood stressors on me and most of us do at some point. Nobody's perfect. Right. And um, and people go through trauma and all these things. And I'm not saying we can get rid of it or eliminate it. What I'm saying is it's how our bodies are handling that stress. So we have to learn how to manage it better because it will impact our health. OK, so in wrap up, guys. Resilience is the ability to adapt and bounce back from adversity. And it's not about avoiding stress altogether, but learning to navigate it with strength and grace, how we manage the stress coming at us. And there are things we can do to decrease stress, like not over-exercise, get enough sleep, eat an anti-inflammatory whole food uh, diet that's giving us good nutrition and, and not ultra-processed because ultra-processed foods and sugar and... Um, and inflammatory foods, which a lot of them are ultra processed and sugar and starches, those are all things that will trigger stress in our body too. And remember guys, you're on a health journey and understanding adrenal health is a crucial step in that journey. And you have the power to take control of your health and wellness journey. You do, no matter where you're at in your health and in your journey, you have the power to make a change and you can work with your healthcare provider on this and you can reach out to me. And just to let you guys know, my disclaimer is I'm not making any medical claims. I'm here to share information to provide education to you. This information is not intended to diagnose, treat, or cure, and it's not intended to replace guidance given to you by your personal healthcare provider who knows you best. I'm on a mission to positively impact your health and wellness through education and coaching to create generational health and a health span that equals your lifespan. Because guys, when you know better, you can do better. You can have these conversations with your healthcare providers. Reach out to me to find out more about how you can begin, <clears throat> how you can begin a healthy lifestyle journey with me. Until next time, guys, stay safe. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful that you gave me